All right, so we're gonna do uh, an overview of digestion with a whole bunch of uh, different models, okay? So this board starts us off, all right? And you see we have a lot of half head type things that we can refer to. We're gonna use this to show us oral cavity and salivary glands. And we'll do intestinal wall, kind of separate issue. So let's begin at the top, all right? So we'll move him over here too. So we begin here with the oral cavity. Right, that's the beginning of our digestive system. So we have it here, we have it here, we have it here. And let's just follow it through, use this board. So it enters in and we have the lips, known as labia. We have the maxilla or hard palate, made up of the maxillary bone and palatine bone. We have the upper set of teeth. We have the mandible, lower set of teeth. So the space is the oral cavity. This is the tongue, right? The main part is the body. Down here is the root. It's made up of skeletal muscle. The surface is known as the dorsum. That's where we're gonna see some lumps and bumps. Those are gonna be the, the taste buds and the papilla, all right? You can also see the soft palate. Okay, so we'll use this area as a soft palate, and then the very end of the soft palate is the uvula. Now this plays a role in preventing the food and water and, and beverage from going up into the nasal cavity. So it kind of flips up and prevents some of that movement. It's not a tight seal, but it does prevent things from going up and, and directs things down into the pharynx into the oropharynx and then into the laryngopharynx behind the larynx, right? So we have all of our respiratory parts here that we saw in other videos. We're moving past the larynx and we go into the esophagus, all right? So here's the beginning of the esophagus. And I think in our pictures, as we were discussing, it's showing that there's a little esophageal sphincter. They're calling it the upper esophageal sphincter. Small bit of smooth muscle that can close and prevent backflow. It's not a strong sphincter, but it's built into the wall. Food passes through the esophagus, which is really just a muscular tube, okay? And when we get to the end of the esophagus, we're gonna enter the stomach. And then we're gonna see another sphincter here, right? The lower esophageal sphincter, meaning built into the wall, muscle that can close and prevent backflow, uh, sometimes known as the cardiac sphincter. And we get into our stomach, and the stomach has different areas. We'll go into details of the stomach, but we have our fundus, we have the cardia, we have the body, we have the pylorus, and then we're gonna move from stomach into small intestine. And there's gonna be another strong sphincter here, the pyloric sphincter, very powerful, nice and tight, keeping stuff in the stomach, opens, release into the duodenum. Small intestine. Small intestine has three sections to it, right? We begin with the duodenum, and it's short. It goes from there to somewhere about here, and it's cut open to show you the inside of it. it shows you little folds, little circular folds, or plica circularis, as they're called. That leads to the next section, which in this case is the darker color, right? That's the jejunum which then leads to the third section, which is in a lighter color, that's the ilium. How do I know? Because the ilium attaches to the large intestine. You can see the attachment there. So here's the ilium leading to the beginning of the large intestine or the colon. And again, there's going to be another very powerful sphincter, the ileocecal valve. Nice and tight, keeps the stuff in, food is done, opens, off it goes. So here, and we're missing a little connecting piece here, right? It goes up and over, all right? But here's the beginning and here's the end. So the beginning is the cecum, all right, cecum. Hanging off the cecum is the little appendix, veriform appendix. We move up, ascending, and we have a curve, all right? And that curve or flexure is near the liver, so we call it the hepatic flexure. We go to the transverse colon, 
And then we get another curve or flexure near the spleen, splenic flexure, descending to about here, and then we get a S shape. The S shape is the sigmoid colon into the rectum, and the opening is the anus. And we're gonna have two sphincters here, an internal and an external before the feces comes out. Okay. Liver, accessory structure, adding to the tract. Pancreas, accessory structure, adding to the tract. Gallbladder, storing bile made by the liver, adding to the tract. The salivary glands are also additional structures, but we don't have them here, so we'll bring over this model. And here in this kind of grayish color, this is two of the three salivary glands. There's one under the tongue, sublingual. There's one under the mandible, submandibula. And I think you can see it, there's little ducts that come off of it. So the saliva is made here and then it's carried and released into the oral cavity. So that's two of the three. They're paired right and left, you can see they are hiding over here. And then the largest one right here, sitting on top of the masseter muscle, that's the parotid gland. And you can see the parotid, parotid duct, saliva made here, and it goes into the oral cavity. And the saliva obviously mixes with the food that you eat. You can see the tongue, you can see the oral cavity, you can see the teeth and the maxilla and the mandible. Same here, same structures again, different model, but same stuff. Same thing here, different model, labia, bone, teeth, cavity, tongue, same stuff. You can see the, the, ton, uh, the tonsils here, right? Lingual, palatine, pharyngeal.